Hey nerds, Amy here, and today we are going to learn two ways that you can concatenate or combine columns within Microsoft Lists. As I do with any calculated field, I start with the basics and then I build on it so that you can learn how to use this to its potential. And as a little bonus for you, at the end, I have shown you how we can add a date column into these formulas and some different formatting options as well so that you can customize it to your needs. So with that being said, let's nerd out. At Amy's Animal Barn and Petco, we have this suppliers list and we are going to create a new column here called address where we are going to combine the city, the state, the province and country. And these two first fields here are both single lines of text. And then the country, as you can see, is a choice column. So I just wanted to demonstrate that this process can be used for different column types. The first thing that we need to do is head on up to add column. And then we need to scroll on down to see all column types. From here, we will add a name, which is going to be address. And then we need to select what type of column this is going to be. And in this instance, we are going to do a calculated column. So we will click that. And then once again, we will scroll on down. And here is where we enter the formula. So the first example we are going to use is concatenate, which is a bit of a mouthful. And we are going to just double click the columns that we want and then separate them by a comma. So we're going to go city, state, prov, and then country. And we just need to ensure that we pop that closing bracket. Down here, we will enter the output, which in this case, we're going to do a single line of text. And then we can click on OK. All right, look at that. So we can see here that those fields have fed over appropriately and they are all now combined but it's a little bit difficult to read and I actually want to add a comma and a space between each item. So in order to do that, we just head on up to this gear icon and then click on list settings. Then we need to scroll on down and find the column that we just created, which in this case, it's the address column. So now down here, I just want to highlight that this is one item. So city is one item state prov is one item and country is one item. And using this formula within SharePoint list, we can have up to 30 items. And these items are separated by commas. So now what we want to do is add a comma and a space between these items, which is going to be an additional item. So we're going to have city comma, and then we need to start off with quotation marks. And because I want to have a comma first, we're going to go comma and then space, quotation marks. And then now I need to put another comma to close out that item so that we can go into the next area. I'm going to do that once again here between state, province, and country. And we're going to start off with quotations, comma, space, quotations, comma, to close out that item. Now we can scroll on down and click OK. So to get back to our list, we can just click on this pet suppliers, which is the list name. It takes you to the SharePoint page. Here we can see the address in action. And look at that. We have a beautiful comma and space between each of these address items. Before heading on to my favorite way to combine columns within lists, I just want to show you first how dynamic this concatenate formula is. Here we are in that formula area once again. And so far we have shown you how you can add a space or a comma between these items. So Let's now say that we want to pop in an and sign, for example. And then over here, if you are enjoying this video, then please give my video a thumbs up as it would really mean a lot to me. Here we are back in the list and we can just see how dynamic that formula is and how it all works together with the different text items. Now on to my favorite way of combining cells. We will once again go add column and then scroll on down to see all column types to add that calculated field. I'm going to call this one addresses because we've already used address. And then we are going to select the calculated column type. 
Down here in the formula, we are simply going to go equals. And then now we will just double click on the column. And then here we are going to go and, and this is just going to simply combine the two columns. So let's just take a look at how this works before we build onto anything else. Here we can see how that ampersand symbol is combining these two cells. And in my opinion, that's just a little bit easier rather than trying to remember how to spell concatenate and then, you know, adding that closing bracket at the end, which can sometimes throw you off. Now let's say that we want to, once again, add that comma in a space between these items. We are going to head on back to, you guessed it, list settings, and then we are going to scroll on down and select the column that we want to edit. So here we have that formula. And in order to add anything between these, we need to ensure that we have that ampersand symbol then a quotation mark. So you're kind of seeing this go through again. And now we're going to go comma, space, quotations, ampersand. And when I first started learning Excel, my teacher suggested that we can easily remember this as think about a hamburger. I know it's funny, but every time that I would use this formula in Excel, I think about a hamburger and the ampersand symbols are the buns and then the quotations are the bacon strips. And then whatever you wanna put in your burger will go between those two quotation marks. So here we have our burger and the additional items that we're adding here is a comma and a space. It's not as tasty as, you know, maybe some guacamole, but hey, that's okay. We're just using Microsoft lists. So now we're going to click okay. And here we are back in that list and you can see how my hamburger method has now added a nice, beautiful comma and a space between these two items. Now I want to show you how we can build on this formula. So once again, we are going to go ampersand and then if you are enjoying this video, then please hit that subscribe button. It would mean a lot to me. And it also means that you will get notified on future videos and content releases. So we are going to put that subscribe between quotation marks. And then we are going to now do an ampersand symbol once again and include that country. So now we are going to see how all of this pulls through into the list. Here we are back in that list and we can see how that has pulled through. So that formula I find is a lot simpler than using the concatenate as you can see, but hey, which one works for you is going to depend on your needs and your preferences. So let me know which one you prefer in the comments below. Are you ready? Things are about to get pretty real here because I am now going to show you how we can combine this country field with the since date. So you guessed it, we are now going to add another calculated column. It is so much fun. We are going to give this a column name and it's going to be called supplier since. Then we are going to head to calculated and scrolling on down to that formula field, we are going to go equals. And then now we are just going to double click the country and then we need to do our hamburger. So we are going to go bun, bacon. I would like to include a space between these items. And then we are going to go bacon, bun once again. This is where it gets fun. So we are going to add the text formula. So we will type text and then just ensure that you add that opening bracket. Now this is where we define the column that we want. So we are going to double click on this since date. And then now we have to add a comma. And this is where we define the format of that date. So we can do a simple format of month, month, day, day, year, 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 year. I guess this would depend on which country you're in and whether you'd like to have the month or the day first, but you can play around and customize it as you see fit. So now we are going to add the closing quotations and then that closing bracket. Do not forget about that because we did that text here with that opening bracket. We need to now close off that formula. All right, let's take a look and see how this is working. And here we are, look at that. It has pulled through and now combined those two fields. I'm going to show you one last little formatting here for the date column before we wrap up. So just stick around because it will show you how you can customize things to your needs when you are, 
you know, combining the date and another column within list. So once again, we are just going to go to the plier since to edit it. And then now say we want it to show month, but as in the spelling of it and using that shorter version. So the first three letters of the month, we can just do that. And do you know what? I'm going to add a dash here as well as a space just to, you know, add a little bit more of breathing room between those two items. Here we are back in list and you can see how that date formatting change has now been updated within the list. I did just want to add that mine did not update right away. So I'm not too sure if there's a bit of a lag in the calculated column updating world, um, but I did just want to add that there if you did have any issues with that as well. If your formula did not work, you would get a warning sign. So if you didn't get that warning sign and it did click through, then it might just take a little bit of time to update in the back end. All right, so that wraps up this video and I do hope that I've helped you discover your inner nerd. Please let me know which of these formulas work better for you or which one you prefer in the comments below. I would really love to know. All right, thanks for nerding out. We'll see you again.